Welcome to I Am Goddess Collective Podcast, a sacred space for empowerment through modern magic, spiritual activism, and reclaiming your power. I am your host, Nixie Marie, feng shui practitioner, earth activist, and mystic here to support and inspire your journey in becoming the change you wish to see in this world. That change starts within. Join myself and fellow thought leaders, metaphysical experts, and luminaries each week as we explore practical and magical ways to living in your highest alignment. Your journey as an empowered goddess begins here. Let's dive in. Hello, all the beautiful goddesses that are tuning in today. Welcome back to the podcast. Very happy to have you listening and tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being your beautiful self and sharing your magic with the world. I just wanted to take this moment to acknowledge you for being here because finding yourself on a podcast that talks about self-growth and development of your, you know, authentic self is not not always an easy journey and I definitely think it's important to paint a really honest and real picture of what things really look like when you're on that healing journey and it's not often easy so my intention here is to always really make sure that you guys are feeling supported and know that you're not alone on this adventure wild ride if you're having this human experience so Um, We have a very awesome, lovely episode today with a beautiful goddess, Natalie Miles. She is a psychic intuitive and spiritual mentor, also a host of another top awesome spiritual podcast on Apple Podcasts, So You Think You're Intuitive. So uh, we're going to dive deep into a lot of different conversations today with her about Uh, We talked a little bit about surrendering and trusting in your life and path and not trying to control the journey and really using your intuition to guide you. And also we really got into ancestral healing and how our stories are like the stories that keep showing up, the patterns that we keep seeing in life continuously uh, could really be linked to our ancestry line. So we talk about how to work with that and how to heal it. And she also has does a lot of work around that with her um, online course. So before we dive into that, I definitely want to drop in and connect with you guys on some of the things we've got going on in the offerings in I Am Goddess Collective. And first and um, foremost, you know, I have been for the past three years, working very hard with my cleaning fairies at Nixie Dust, cleaning on on ways to really use natural non-toxic products for the earth. Because as you all know, I'm taking a really big new direction and mission to create solutions for the environment. And this is this is my my baby with my partner that we're bringing into the world. And Because of that, I've been on this mission to really find something that's natural, doesn't have any harmful chemicals and create a formula that I know is as good as or better than anything on the market for a cleaning on a cleaning performance level. And it had to be also completely healthy in every way for us, our children, our pets and the earth as a whole. So over the last six months, my partner and I have really been working hard to find the best way to bring this type of product to the market and in a way that's healthy, affordable, convenient, and most importantly, sustainable for both the planet and for you and your families. So today, I'm very happy to be announcing the one and only product that I feel super confident in talking about on this podcast and bringing to you my lovely goddess community because it is something that I absolutely know will make a huge impact on your life, your health, in your home. This product is called Clarity, C-L-A-R-Y-T-I. For those of you who have followed me, you know, for some time and you know how much I talk about the home and the environment and have been studying feng shui and how important it is it is for us to really create a sustainable environment around us and a home that we can recharge, rejuvenate and rekindle the love of life and the love for the people around us. And this is the reason why I, you know, study feng shui and do this work and why we have created our home in 
the nature of Topanga, California and why we talk about the philosophy of home so much here on I Am Goddess Collective. So we are calling the product Clarity because the mission is that we have to give people visibility into everything that they bring into their homes and everything that affects the people they love. So I strongly believe this is something that has been lost in this modern world and we're demanding that it be brought back to us. We also know that cleaning products are full of waste from the packaging to the shipping and Clarity has, get this guys, zero plastic, zero non-reusable components and dramatically reduces shipping's impact on global warming. Uh, Global warming, (laughs) as you guys know, climate, the climate crisis is a real thing. And we do this by eliminating the water and instead replacing it with a special concentrate formula. And this concentrate actually makes four bottles. So when you get the starter kit, those four bottles are less than your single all-purpose cleaner that you go buy in the stores. And the concentrate that gets in your starter kit is amazing. It's in a jar and you can reuse that jar. And like I said, everything is reusable. So this is a one product for all things (laughs) amazingness. <laughs> We've been testing Clarity for some time and the response has been nothing less than extraordinary. It's only because of this positive response that I feel so very confident to talk about it on the podcast and give you, our lovely Goddess Collective, the chance to pre-order because we haven't officially launched yet your own starter pack for over 30% off the regular price. This is once again, my gift to you. And all I ask is that you tell me in your stories of how it has helped reduce toxins in your home and create an even more balanced, peaceful, and sustainable place for you and your families. So simply go to clarity.com slash goddess to learn more and decide for yourself if this is something you want to invest in for the people around you and for the planet. It's also the one and only way I have chosen to support this podcast moving forward. During the three years of I Am Goddess Collective, I have been so unbelievably called to create an authentic, safe, supportive, and expressive space that I haven't taken a single paying sponsor. Clarity is the way I'm choosing to support the podcast moving forward. So even if you do not choose to try Clarity, please share the product as I know that it can transform homes and lives. So simply visit Clarity, that's C-L-A-R-Y-T-I dot com forward slash goddess for your exclusive discount. And thank you all for being part of the collective and contributing to our amazing community. Let's go ahead and dive in to this amazing episode with Natalie Miles. Hello, Divine Sisters. Welcome back to another episode of I Am Goddess Collective Podcast. I am sitting with a beautiful, magical sister, Natalie Miles. She is on the show with us today. Hello, Natalie. Hello. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, we're super excited to have you and dive into some of your work. Natalie is a spiritual mentor and psychic medium. She is actually also a host of a top spiritual podcast on iTunes or Apple Podcasts now. Uh, So you think you're intuitive, which I love because it's sort of like a catchy phrase of like, you, I can tell you have some like satire comedy to you, <laughs> maybe a little yeah. bit. <laughs> and uh, she's also not really your typical psychic medium. She's really on a mission here to make intuition accessible and be the door opener for others to connect to their intuition. And she really believes that intuition is for everyone and that most people are born intuitive or everyone is born intuitive and uh, that most people might have just forgotten how to use their natural gifts. So now Natalie has been guided by spirit to be the door opener and reactivate people with their intuition. But that isn't just about reactivating your gifts to get future guidance on your life. It's to inspire others to use their intuition so they can heal the present moment and to look at what's holding them back, acknowledge their blocks and begin the healing process so they can live their most authentic life. So I think it's pretty apparent why she's here with us today because we love talking about all these things and diving deep. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having us. And you know, with with psychic mediumship and kind of connecting more to spirit worlds, I always think it's fascinating, you know, like the original story and kind of before we get into your why and what you kind of let what led you to do all this work. um, I love to start the show with this question. What crystals are you currently working with and why? Oh, good question. Um, I go in and out of working with crystals. Sometimes I'm working with them regularly. Sometimes I'm not. 
Um, I actually, I wear a lot of, um, I wear my jade um, necklace that I have. So I work with a lot of um, heart opening, heart Mm. grounding crystals. My jade crystal is something that I love to work with. Um, I work with my smoky quartz to really promote grounding. Um, Yeah, and I've been also working with um, a charawite as well as as, as a crystal, a bit of a Mm. different crystal. But yeah, so some some crystals for kind of heart opening and channeling. So and really getting um, heart open and, and channeling through as well. So yeah, so for me, my crystals are... Yeah, grounding and um, grounding, heart opening, and to help facilitate um, channeling and connecting to source. Yeah, yeah, it's but, interesting. You said jade for heart opening. A lot of people say rose quartz, but I love asking this question because it always brings up, you know, different like what we're attracted to and what really works for us. And it's important to know that not everything works for some people in the same way. No, completely, and just really um, being guided to work with a stone that you're like, I don't know why I need to work with this and then picking it up and then finding the information out and you're like, oh yeah, well that makes sense. Of course <laughs> I'm supposed to be working with it. Yeah. And um, I had a Vedic astrology reading and um, the woman said uh, um, it would be really good in your chart if you were to in a, to be aligned with your chart, if you were wearing um, a stone that was um, green and that was um, green and gold and mm. in a green and gold setting. And I have this green and gold um I have this green ring which is um it's like a tourmaline it's a really vivid green tourmaline in a gold setting and I was kind of like well like this one she's like oh cool you're doing it already that's awesome (laughs) that is really cool I also think that it's like green helps with like money and abundance and thinking of that and just kind of embodying it and really feeling with the color so that's beautiful yeah yeah well Natalie tell us like okay so psychic medium which you know, not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody really understands what that is like. There's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of, you know, conversations and fear, I think, around just stepping into honoring that kind of a gift. And um, we've talked about this, you know, many times here on the podcast, but I think whatever, what always makes everyone's story unique is their story. So, you know, what led you on this path and, and how did you discover that you are a medium? Yeah, wow. It's definitely been a journey. Um, I, in fact, I recorded an episode of my podcast this week basically saying you can't plan the journey. Don't expect working with spirit. It's going to give you some blueprint and map. You know, here you go. You know, this yeah. is what's going to happen in your life and, and give you the future layout because it just doesn't work that way. And even five years ago, so five years ago, I was um, I moved to Vancouver um, from the UK, um, Vancouver, Canada. And I was working in film and yeah, I would, if you had said five years ago that I'd be doing this right now, I would have laughed. I would have been like, you are joking, right? Like yeah. this, what for real? Um, so it's definitely been a journey, but I, um, I grew up psychic intuitive as a kid, even though I didn't have those labels, I didn't know what that meant. Um, but I knew that um, I felt things, I knew things, I saw things. Um, my spirit guide appeared to me at the end of my bed age five and was like, Hey, Mm. Nat, I'm here to help you, guide you, protect you, look after you. And, but it's always, it's been something that's been floating around in the background of growing up as a kid, um, you know, even feeling the shame of those gifts, potentially, um, uh, doing a Ouija board at school and it actually moving and spelling out stuff and girls, te- you know, staring at you and being like, it's your fault. You're the one <laughs> making this move. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's been moments of that. Um, and it, the big, the, I mean, the big moment was when my mom um, started going to psychic circles herself in the UK and uh, age 16, 17, I uh, invited me to go with her. So that was the first time I ever kind wow. of really put myself in a structured um, environment to connect to spirit. And I was like, whoa, this is insane. Like feeling feelings and sensations in my body that I'd never mm-hmm. experienced before. One of them being like my hands were on my tops of my legs, but it felt like they were raised up. Like it felt like they weren't, you know, attached to my body anymore, which I remember feeling as a sensation for the first time and giving my first message to someone and being like, oh, oh, this is really cool. I can, I can do this. 
Um, but it, you know, it just kept, it, my gifts kept being in the background. They weren't, you know, being consciously used, you know, twenties come along. I was at university at college, um, yeah. relationships, the pressure of getting the right career and doing that so yeah I worked in film for 10 years and then nothing yeah and then five years ago I was in the UK and nothing fitted living in London I was like this is not for me like really mm. trusting that that intuitive moment of like this doesn't fit I'm gonna follow this this doesn't make any sense but I'm moving to Canada and let's just see what happens and that's led me on this journey to not being with around friends and family and structure um, my old, you know, old Matt, old ways of being, those ways that kind of keep us staying in one way and really connecting to my intuitive gifts and allowing them in. And suddenly it's like, oh, oh, well, this is why I've been led here. And it didn't make any sense at the time, but only with, you know, retrospect, it's like, oh, yes, this is why I've been led to this, you know, this place to connect to my intuition and then to quit working in film and, and do this. So yeah, it's been quite a ride. Yeah, it sounds like it. Well, when you were in that place in your life where you were, you felt sort of disconnected or maybe disempowered with your intuition, what was that like? Like what did, what, what would you, what does your day-to-day -day look like? You know, were you feeling good? Did you have like moments where you just felt off? Like what was that like for you? Yeah, it can feel really isolating and alone when you're not getting the messages and the guidance that when it's coming through. And I'll be straight up and really transparent. Since I stopped doing one-on-one -on -one client sessions, like giving messages to people, um, you know, three times a week and that being the same main focus of my business and I stopped that at the end of May, I am actually in a space in a phase right now where I'm working with spirit in different ways mm -hmm. and then not showing up in how they have been. And even now I'm like, okay what's going on <laughs> like why are you doing this the way you used to so yeah. this isn't just um uh this just doesn't happen to you if you're just starting with you're working with your intuition and it disappears it also happens um when you're a seasoned psychic medium and it's your business mm -hmm. <laughs> they do it too and it can it can make you feel really isolated it can make you feel really alone it can make you feel like you're questioning what the purpose is and where you're going and what you're trying to call in. And from my past experiences and where I'm at now, I'm in this true space of surrendering and trusting the fact that because I'm not getting the guidance in the ways that I want to get the guidance, it's because there's something different, better, um, new ways and I'm in this process right now of trusting and surrendering really what wants to come in so um, it, for, for people who are feeling that kind of aloneness and wanting to you know you're really 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 wanting an answer um, know that you might actually the best learning of what you're supposed to be experiencing right now is not having an answer and not having the guidance and that mm. you're being left to kind of be and discover in new ways that are subtle or different um, for you. And my piece of advice that I'm taking myself right now is go and do something different, like go mm. and do something that lights you up, go and like completely change the focus on connecting to your intuition or connecting in the ways that you used to go and sing, dance, mm. cook, write, walk around the block, connect to your body in a new way because it will reshift things for you and bring in how spirit wants to connect and work with you. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because I think that's kind of what's happening. We were talking a little bit earlier before we started recording about, you know, the season and just sort of things moving slower. And it feels as if we're all being led in a place that's sort of more uncomfortable than we're used to, which is important. It's important to go to those uncomfortable places. And, you know, it, what I'm really hearing is that it's it's like it's not ever going to look the certain way. And also it's probably more inviting, like you were being invited to go inward and find the answers within versus like being reliant upon spirit or the guides. But when you bring it back to your intuition, like what, what do, would you say is a key indicator of your intuition speaking like versus your ego? 
Oh yeah, that's the biggest, you know, that can be the biggest pitfall or thing that we get stuck on. Am I making this up? Is this real? Um, is this the ego mind? So I like to say that um, the ego mind wants an answer now. It needs an answer and it needs it right now. Mm-hmm. It will also try and make sense of everything. It will need like it will you'll need an answer and it'll have to make complete sense of what you're trying to do or make happen. Um, it will also um, involve words like should, would, you know, must, I must have this. Um, there's a sense of like, there's, yeah, there's a time purpose on it. Um, I also like to describe that um, the ego mind can also feel like the continual chatter at the front of the head versus the intuitive mind and the intuitive message where it feels like it comes from the back of the head. It feels like it has a different tone to it. Um, Another thing is that um, you can also sometimes say that the intuitive message comes in and then it will go and it will disappear. It will literally, it will come in and it will be part of your thoughts and then it will disappear and it will go versus your anxiety thinking ego mind that will just go and go and go and go and, go and, and you can't stop it from being there. And that's a good indicator. And the intuitive mind doesn't have a time frame on it and it might not necessarily make sense, but you know in your heart that it feels Um, really good Mm. and so those are a few markers of you know how to distinguish between the ego mind when you you know the expectation of what you want versus those intuitive messages that come in um, and nine times out of ten don't make any sense Um, but you know in your heart like I have to do this this feels really good and I'm going to surrender and take the leap of faith because it just feels aligned Mm. yeah that's definitely uh I, I can agree with that. The chattery, <laughs> crazy ego that loves to take over our like best life and wants to sabotage us. And, you know, because you teach into intuition and, and really allowing people to remember that they have an intuition, how does that how does that like really support somebody when they are feeling really lost or feeling like they are um, not on, not on the right path? You know, how does getting to their intuition really support them on their journey? Cause I think that's something that, you know, a lot of people feel. Yeah. Um, so firstly, this expectation of what we think we should have again the exterior I should be at this point in this relationship I should be married by now I should have kids I should Mm -hmm. um be in this career and be earning this amount of money like it's all this exterior um comparison or expectation of what we think we should Mm -hmm. where we should be at And so by listening to our intuition, connecting with our guides and really being back connected to our heart center Mm. um, and using tools and practices to do that, it allows us to really reaffirm and get clear and look at our blocks and our patterns and the things that are holding us back so that we can, once we've acknowledged and we can use our intuition to, to look at those things, it's then like, oh, well, actually, I wasn't calling in that right person because I was still holding on to X, Y, and Z. Or, do you know what? I've been dealing with this money story that might actually not even just be mine. It actually is connected to my ancestors and my family. And now, I, now I've now i broken that pattern I've and acknowledged that. Oh, do you know what? Now I am ready to go and get that job and earn $40,000 more. And I know that I have the self-worth around it. So it's mm. back into that where that mission of, using our intuitive gifts to heal the present moment to heal those things so we can move forward Mm. like those are really um those are really really important and just acknowledging where you are right now like there's this expectation that we should be doing and creating and it's it's using your intuitive gifts and sometimes just listening to yourself and being like do you know what today I shouldn't be hustling to make all these dreams come to fruition and, and, you know, put myself out on Tinder and, or put myself out there when, you know what, I'm not ready for that right now. And I've got a little bit of work on things I should be looking at before I'm going for those big dreams and those visions. 
Um, yeah. And I think we put a lot of our pressure on ourselves to, to make those things happen when we're actually not ready. That is some powerful medicine. Definitely, definitely just sitting with that truth of, you know, knowing to trust and have faith. I pulled this card yesterday. I've been working with the mermaid oracle decks. Um, I'm a total like ocean mermaid. So lately I've been working with this deck and the first card I pulled when I actually last night, just asking for some guidance on just a few things, you know, like feeling a little off my center. Things feel a little different right now in the atmosphere, in my collective with my guy, everything. And the, the card I pulled was faith. And it's just like, whoosh, like right into the heart because that word can just transform are the shoulds, the coulds, the woulds, the comparison, the ability to not stay present with what's really happening and to have faith. So I really think what you're just saying ultimately comes back to that is having faith and trusting. And those things aren't often easy though. You know, it's no way. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like our biggest human test is trust and, and faith and knowing that everything that is, for, you know, it sounds super cliche. Oh, you know, trust that everything's coming for you. You know, you won't miss it. Like that old, you know, that quote that keeps going around, <laughs> but it is, it's knowing that trust that something's coming and it's for you, but also that something better might be coming like beyond your wildest dreams that you couldn't even mm. think about in the, your human body of where you are right now, mm. that spirit might be actually bringing something that is even better that will kind of, you know, slightly blindside you and you'll be like, whoa, wow, this is, this is possible. Shit. Like, mm. yeah, it's, um, be open to it, be open to that. And, and it, talking to your, like things feel different. Like it is we're right now we're being changed on a real DNA soul level. Mm. We're really shifting from 3D consciousness, you know, to use the buzzwords in the industry right now, 3D consciousness, <laughs> 5D consciousness. Um, mm. But it is, it's this, it, the the ways that we used to do things don't fit anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's uncomfortable when it doesn't fit the old ways that you've done things or the relationships or your job or how you show up for yourself or how you connect to your intuition. It doesn't fit anymore and you're being asked to do it in a new way. What are some of the ways, like the old ways that you know are no longer in, in support of this like new paradigm we're, we're creating? Um, yeah, um, external validation. I feel like we've, we were in this world of the celebrity or the, um, what does success look like? And I think we're beginning to slowly look at that and think, oh, actually, um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on people to live these dream lives and have this. And I think that that's going to be slowly crumbling around and people mm. are realizing that. Um, social media, I feel like in a, we're in a time where the, the, our relationship to social media is really changing. I think people are being a lot more conscious on what they're posting and how they're posting and why they're mm. posting. Like, why am I feeding into something? There's an expectation. So it's finding finding new relationships with um, what that looks like um, in the physical world. I mean, hey, just look at politics, social justice, and everything that's happening in the world that we live in right now and the environment. Yeah. Old structures and ways of being are crumbling around us and we're realizing that they don't fit and they don't work and it's uncomfortable. So we're in this the big phase of transition and change um, because what happens on the micro with ourselves you know, is happens on the macro. And so, what, yep. you know, as individuals, as we're experiencing the shift in growth and, you know, the crumbling and the transformation, that's going to, that's going to keep showing up in our um, main systems and structures of the world that we live in. Yeah. Truth bomb. <laughs> yeah, and it's, Definitely. and it's, and 2020 is huge. Like as we going through Ugh. the next five years, like, whew, like, and this is why as intuitives, we're being prepped right now. Mm. Like we are seeing the, the last three, four months is really preparing ourselves for the energy of what is coming. Cause it's like, if you can do this for yourself on the micro, if mm. you can look at what's holding you back, if you can look at, you know, doing things differently, it's going to help and support you grow and transform as, you know, things transform on the exterior more and more. Um, we're being called to remember 
the importance of the interior and not feed the fear and not feed the ego and you know it, that's what we're really being tested and rewired for that's what it feels like yeah i think there's a i know there was a lot of podcasters and other f- friends that I know that took a little bit of a break over the summer or just took a break from podcasting. And I know I was listening and I heard you did too. So I was totally stalking you before we started this interview. And <laughs> I think that was a big part of it though. There was this, there was a strong pull and, and I was like, well, we get to be this, this, we're at a place where we have a voice, right. And, and the sense of leadership and there's such an integration happening that if we don't honor ourselves and take care of our needs and be in a place of self-care, then we're not being of service in any way, shape or form, you know, because then I think it does come back to that ego of wanting to get somewhere faster or, you know, speed up the process. And mm-hmm. I think it's just a big conversation that a lot of people are having where, you know, if you're intuitive, you're you're tuned into what's happening. There's no way you can't be tuned into what's going on with the environment, the climate crisis, like all these things. And I think a lot of our messaging is shifting. Yeah, with it's, that. Um, yeah, massively and getting clear on, you know, taking that time out and that space to be like, what are my visions? What are my values? Why do I do this? Like for me this summer, there's been, you know, why do I do this work? What is the point of this? Why am Mm. I connecting to spirit? Why am I connecting to source or whatever human label you want to put onto it? What is the mission? Why? Like, what is the why? Because we all have to, as you say, look at ourselves first before we can, um, you know, hold space for the collective um, and what that means. Mm, yeah. And embody it, embody what, yeah, what it looks like. It. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you're not doing, if you're not doing the work yourself, how can you be spouting and saying, you know, this is what's coming through, but if you're not embodying it mm. and doing the work and looking at the shadow and, um, yourself and you're just being a mouthpiece, then you can't, you know, that again, that's old, pa- that's old paradigm. That's old ways. It's, um, and you do, and you 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 will see leaders out there or things being shared when you're like, are they really doing the work? You know, is this mm-hmm. just spiritual bypassing that is just happening right now? Yeah. Um, and it's being aware of that. Yeah, all love and light definitely is not. It's interesting that that world kind of came into this new age, you know, community and just to see it happen, I think was interesting because it's not like, like healing and tapping into your intuition, all those parts is more shadow work than it is light work. You know, there's so many more uncomfortable areas that you've got to go into than actually talking about how amazing it is and how awesome it is. And all of a sudden you're, you know, becoming this unlocked being that can tap into these frequencies and your life is just amazing. It's not really how it works. And I love seeing that it's becoming like more people are stepping into their authenticity about it, you know? And I think, I think that's something that definitely you are embodying as well. And being in that space of, um, being intuitive about it is, is really important. And just listening to what's, what's real versus what's like you said, spiritual bypassing. So that's, yeah. And everyone practicing discernment around it Mm -hmm. in communities and being like, and really listening to, um, listen, ironically, listening to your intuition and your discernment around the information that you're receiving and processing for, um, inverted commas, leaders, gurus, mm-hmm. people who are, you know, thought leaders in the field in this industry and being and really listening and being like, does this resonate with me? Does this feel, does this fit with me? And listening to your intuition around that is going to become really, I mean, it's important now, but as we go through these big transformations that are coming up, um, it's going to be even louder to really practice it, to practice that discernment. Well, now seems like the perfect opportunity to share with you goddesses, our newest sponsor, the moon deck. The moon deck is a beautiful Oracle set that connects you to your intuition and brings self-care rituals into your daily life created to foster community and healing this entire set of 44 cards plus a beautiful guidebook filled with rituals is inspired by the cycles of the moon and the empowerment of women it shares insights on growth purpose practice and emotional well-being the moon deck can be worked with as an oracle guide as a daily tool for reflection and meditation or simply in a tarot inspired spread 
As a goddess listener, you receive 10% off the entire site. So head on over to themoondeck.com forward slash goddess and enter code goddess moon to receive your discount. Happy rituals and oracle card pulling sisters. I love you. What are some of the like most common things that you find with people you said you used to work one-on-one um, that they struggle with like fears or limiting beliefs that like keep them separate from leading a life listening to their intuition? Yeah. Um, oh, so many. Um, <laughs> I could, um, here, are, here are a few. <laughs> um, um, that they're not good enough or, they do, they, or that they don't deserve it. Um, it's amazing how many people play small because of their families or what the expectation of their family, the, Im- the impact of their family's beliefs that they've been brought up with that still impact their lives, even if they don't believe them. Um, it still comes through how the family relationships are actually one of the biggest blocks from um, people living their most authentic being the most authentic selves, being able to communicate the way that they want to. Um, Throat chakra, oh my gosh, like communication is blocks in the throat chakra, Mm -hmm. people not feeling confident to um, speak their truth and also be seen. I think those are the, the, the main ones is the craving to be seen and heard, but not trust, you know, wanting to be seen and heard, um, but either not being able to or not having the confidence um, to be able to be seen or heard. Um, and uh, um, ancestor stories so that um, this kept coming up in one-on-one sessions that our blocks, themes and patterns aren't just ours, they're from our ancestors. And so what you might be experiencing now is actually just a version of what your mum experienced, your grandmother experienced, your great grandmother experienced on different levels. But if you look at the the theme, the theme is still there. And so spirit would share these themes to people and they'd be like, Oh, whoa. Yeah. That's exactly what my mum went through or yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it's so for example, um, well, let me think of an example. Um, one person that a woman who never felt like she could be grounded or find a home, she felt like she had to, um, be, um, a tra- you know, a traveler Traveler, or like she had to be on the go all the time and a home wasn't something that she felt comfortable being in. And then she looked at her mom's story and her mom had her whole focus of her whole entire life was creating a home. And that was the focus and the mission because her mom thought that if she made a home, that her life would be whole and it would be complete. And that that was that. And then you look at the the grandmother story and it turns out that they were immigrants and that they had to leave their home to get you know and to start a new life and that was the the mission was starting a new life and it's interesting how these themes and patterns go through the generation and show up in different ways um but it's all kind of asking us to look at the healing around you know the the idea of home, the idea of being uprooted and leaving people and friends. And yeah, it's so interesting how it's like this big web that yeah. once you see it and you can decon and you can deconstruct it. And that was what I loved working with, um, with one of client sessions with kind of deconstructing that and showing people and then being like, Oh, Oh wow. Um, that, that was part of the biggest breakthroughs for people. Yeah. You definitely highlighted a few times here on that ancestral story. And I mean, just to give some guidance on what someone can do, some of the listeners out there that are, you know, maybe just had that click aha moment of, oh, wow, maybe this is deeper than just me. And I've been carrying this for (laughs) so many decades of my lineage or however long, you know, and you are ready to nip it in the butt now. Uh, Mm -hmm. Where, where should they go first? Like, what's the first step? Um, first step is knowing that you can also heal this if you don't know family members or that you're adopted. That's really important as mm-hmm. well because a lot of people are like, well, I'm adopted or I don't know one side of my family or I'm not in contact with a with a with a family member. Um, know that you can. Um, if you do have the privilege of going to speak to family, ancestors, friends that know, you know, your parents, your grandparents, your great parents, you know 
find out the stories. It's mm. you can find so much in the stories of um, asking, what was your childhood like? Um, what do you think the learning was in this lifetime for you? Uh, what were the fear and anxieties that came up for you as a child? Um, just if you feel open to having that dialogue with people that are around or who know some of the problems or difficulties or the things that they had to face, that's an amazing place to start. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. And I and also I have a Heal Your Ancestor Story online course. So hey, oh, well, there you go. You want more structure, <laughs> just go to her website. <laughs> but, um, a great place to start is actually talking to people who know your ancestors or your family to start seeing what these themes and patterns are. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it also sounds like it would create a really epically deep conversation with your parents or grandparents that you've probably never had before. So yeah. <laughs> I and, definitely and, think that would be important. Yeah. And the stories that get lost, the actual stories mm. that get lost that we don't realize. And I mean, I even, you know, when you're growing up and they're like, oh yeah, well, your great grandmother, she used to do that. And you're like, did she? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. And it's interesting how you can see personality traits that flow through the family or as well. And so, yeah, these stories get lost. So it's a great opportunity to make sure these stories don't get lost so we can learn from them and pass them on to the next generation too. Because this is in the end, we're doing this healing, not just to heal. Well, when we heal ourselves, we also heal the past generations and the generations that have come um, before us by us looking at these ancestor stories but it's also about healing descendants like in the end right. this is about we're doing this so we can stop these loops and stop these cycles so that the you know our then the next generation doesn't have to hold on to the the luggage the the invisible baggage that we like to carry around what were some of the the ancestral stories that you had found out in your healing journey and you know led you to realize oh shit this is not yeah. like my story what what, yeah. what, what was yours um, I know so what mine is, is. <laughs> mine is, is um what is a mother um mm. and so um to condense it my great grandmother um gave away her children um, before the Second World War, um, because she was um, an unmarried woman um, with two small children from two different men. So yeah, that in the 1920s in itself was pretty taboo. Wow. And um, which then led to when the Second World War happened, she decided she wanted her children back because um, she wanted to protect them because the war was here. Um, but what that meant was she didn't she lied and she didn't say that she was their mother she said I'm your aunt mm, um, and they wow. um they didn't know um that they thought their parents were killed in a car crash um which then led to my grandmother um yeah which then led to my grandmother finding out on her wedding day that her aunt wasn't her aunt it was actually her mother because she had to produce a birth certificate um, oh my gosh. For, on the wedding day. Yeah. So imagine finding out that out on your wedding day. Um, yeah. I'm like tearing up and <laughs> yeah. that's crazy. And then, so my mum's, my, how my mum fits into that is um, she mm. um, basically, uh, she has me and my sister, but she has was a sacrifice for, so she sacrificed her career for um, being a mother um, and um, my great grandmother part of the reason why she hid having two kids is that she had a top high career in, in the civil service and she couldn't if she was married she couldn't have that job back in the 20s which is crazy they were like you can't in the 30s you can't have that job if you're married which is also why she hid it so my mum's version is like her sacrificing her career to have kids and then where I fit into this and my sister sit, sit man, where my sister fits into it is that I'm in a relationship and um, with um, a guy who um, had a vasectomy in his 30s. So I fell, you know, on our first date and I was like, I knew he was really important. I knew I had to be with him, but he was like, oh, and by the way, I can't give you children. So it's been me and kind of mm. it hasn't always been a priority for me having kids right. like 
it really hasn't but it's been interesting kind of navigating that and seeing how that shows up with me and my sister um has really bad endometriosis so um she um is struggling with that and so my um, I, I won't have ch- prob- I won't have children of her of her uh, of her own as well so this idea and theme of what is a mother flows all the way wow. from you know I well, we can track it for a hundred years, so it'd be really interesting. Yeah, if I knew what my great great grandmother and her where she fits in and all of that as well. So, yeah, it's it's insane how we <laughs> trace it back. You you're holding on to a version of it all. Wow, wow, that's really deep. You know, and I think too, it's like just you talking about that. I, I'm thinking how there's similar stories there, but mostly what comes up is like when you give someone like an elder permission to share their story. That's what we're missing right now. I feel like we're not listening to our elders so much with respect, you know, back in the day, like if we did something, I mean, we were like punished to a really insane degree, but now it seems like there's a disconnect there. And I love this conversation because I feel like it brings us back to, you know, this just really authentic vulnerable place with the people who are in our families and not so much outside of us, but right there, right in that web that you're talking about. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a really good invitation for some of you listeners out there to just go have like speak to your grandma on on her next 90th birthday, or, you know, maybe she's not going to be around that much longer. And I'm kind of speaking to myself here too, that it's important to go and have those conversations and discover something that you had no idea. And I get chills because it's, it's probably going to lead you to really deep healing. It really will. And it's that, as you say, the knowledge is within us, the knowledge is here. um, And it's about tapping into the sacred. We really, Mm. we're stepping, you know, tapping into the elders and it is part of that deep knowledge and wisdom that's been around for thousands of years, bringing it back to intuition and we're being called to get back to it. And, you know, look at the environment. We're realizing that the elders and the, you know, old, old technology and new technology combined is where we're going because we need to get back to the basics Mm. of, of how we deal with the environment, how Mm. we connect. We are being called back to, the simple, simplistic, older ways so that we can treat what the chaos that we've caused within the environment, within health, um, yeah. and getting back to that. Yeah. Well, I feel that we have a very similar uh, vision and message, and it just kind of brings us all back to this one thing, which is the intuition, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, uh, it's really important to just do the work and to remember that that's always there. And, you know, like you said, you know, do, do do the, like go somewhere, (laughs) start from wherever you need to go to find where your intuition is. Um, what I actually have a funny question for you to totally change the subject, but what's like the craziest thing that spirit has ever led you to do or the wildest? (laughs) Oh, wow. What's the well? Uh, well, one packing your bags up and being like, right. I'm going to leave. Yeah, I think that was the, the biggest, um, the biggest leap of faith. Um, what other crazy things have they gotten me to do? Um, they've gotten me to do some like crazy adventures. When I was younger, I had a, the privilege of going to um, Nepal and trekking to up to Everest Base Camp and, and going up there, which was amazing. And on um, part of that is I, I, I love the water and I went white water rafting and, and it was this crazy trip. And um, all the locals were on top of this coach. They were on top of this coach um, riding through the Himalayas and they were all, and they were like, come on that, come up on the roof. And I was like, no, no way. Like I am not, why would I go on, why would I go on the roof of a, of a coach? Like, this is not safe. Like, yeah. why would I do that? <laughs> guys and my guys like stop being such a control freak stop Mm. go and have fun this could be an an amazing experience that you're um missing out on 
Um, and I did, and I climbed to the top of this coach with everyone and, and was sat at the top of this coach driving through the mountains. And it is, it's still one of those moments I'll, I'll always remember because it was something that was massively outside of my comfort zone where I really let go and I just had the most magical experience mm. because I listened and I didn't block myself of, what if something bad's going to happen? Yeah. This isn't safe. And yeah, of course, of those moments, but it was, <laughs> it was really, really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. And uh, just just like I love hearing what we get into, you know, when when we get out of our own way. And I think it's really important to just like sum everything up with letting go, like trusting, have faith and um, listening to your elders. I love that. I'm like, that is probably, I really want to invite you all to check out uh, your, you have an ancestral course. If you guys are really feeling that uh, to, to check it out, because I think that was a really strong message that came through on this show today. And um, I'm definitely feeling that. And just like going backwards, going back to basics, you know, where a lot of us are talking about living mindfully, living more, you know, less with less shit, with less things and really cleaning up our environment and cleaning up ourselves. And that's, uh, like you said, two part process. So, well, Natalie, thank you so much. We're kind of at the tail end of our show here. So I really enjoyed this conversation and just sort of where into our, our, our intuitions ultimately <laughs> led us to, uh, yeah. when it's funny. Cause when I came, when I first started, I was writing down some questions that I had for you. And then I was just like, you know, I used to run the show so intuitively and not really have a set list of questions. So I feel like this is going to be the one that I get to just go back to that. So it feels oh, good, you know, to yeah, I love it. Yeah, let go of that structure. Going with the flow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just going with the flow. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. So thanks for bringing that back to the show. And no, um, I like to wrap up the show with a few final questions uh first and foremost where can everybody find you yeah um you can find me my website is natalie-miles.com miles spelled like the distance um my instagram is i am natalie miles and i share quite a bit on there and um the podcast um so you think you're intuitive so yeah there's guest episodes solo episodes on how to connect your intuition and i also do a monthly channeled message from spirit on what the themes are for mm -hmm. that month on things you need to watch out for and yeah it's always i love sh um channeling that through because it kind of gives some it makes you not feel alone that you're going through this stuff and you think am i am i alone and people message and they always say oh my god it's like you're just talking at me this is exactly what i'm feeling so yeah, yeah those are the best places and yeah the heal your ancestors story course and intuition workshops are all on my website too and you have a new course coming out right in October yeah in October I'm doing um I'm finally I am putting out a um how to develop your intuitive gifts um online course so it's um there'll be mini mini courses on how to um develop your hearing seeing knowing and feeling gifts and mm. it's all practical so that you can actually grow and develop these skills. All the Claire's. I love it. Yeah. That's all awesome. the Claire's. Yeah. <laughs> all the Claire's as individual, um, yeah, as individual, um, courses. And, um, I also do, um, a monthly online circle, which has a different theme of the month and yeah, those are fun too. Epic. Well, I love, I love what you do. It's really beautiful to see how you do it and what sets you apart. And it's um, always inspiring to drop in with another soul sister who's doing the work. So uh, yeah. last and final question we have for you today. Uh, how do you invoke your inner goddess? Um, how do I invoke my inner goddess? For me right now, it is surrendering and trusting as we've been talking about that. That's how I'm invoking my inner goddess. And it is bringing in the tools and the practices of trusting and surrendering and doing not what I think I should be doing, but what feels really good in my body and in my soul and in my heart. Mm. That's powerful. I love that. Surrender, trust, 
all the things here on the show today. (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed this, this beautiful episode with Natalie. Thank you again for coming on. You're amazing. Everybody go check her out and uh, we love you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. And well, thank you, Natalie. (laughs) Thank you. All right, sisters. I love you. I see you. I hear you until next time. Bye for now.